When we think of women in science, there are many fearful and outstanding women come into our mind, whose work in science not only changed the course of science forever, but also the fate of every woman after them. One of these outstanding and marvelous women was Madame Curie, first female Nobel laureate. Mary Curie was born in 1867 in Warsaw, in Kingdom of Poland which back then was a part of Russian Empire. Mary Curie or Maria Sklodowska was the fifth and youngest child of her parents. In her childhood, Maria attended a boarding school for several years. After this, she wanted to pursue higher education in science, but at that time, she was unable to enroll in a regular institution of higher studies because she was a woman. Because of this reason, she and her sister joined Flying University, which was actually a secret university run by Polish patriots in Warsaw. In 1891, she moved to Paris for research purposes and more opportunities. This decision later changed her life and the course of science forever. In France, Maria Sklodowska became famous Marie Curie, although she used her both surnames and never lost her Polish identity. In Paris, first she started to live with her sister and her husband before renting a garret. There in France, she started studying physics, chemistry and mathematics at the University of Paris. In 1893, she was awarded a degree in physics and began work in industrial laboratory. While working there, she continued her studying at the university and earned a second degree in 1894. Maria Sklodowska began her scientific career with an investigation of magnetic properties of various steels and she published many papers on it. In that same year, she met Pierre Curie, who was an instructor at the City of Paris Industrial Physics and Chemistry Higher Educational Institution. Their mutual passion for science brought them closer and they began to develop feelings for one another. In March 1895, Madame Curie got her doctorate degree. In the same year, she and Pierre got married. This science couple, in the upcoming years, were about to change the science forever. In the year 1896, Henry Becquerel discovered that uranium salts emit rays like X-rays, having penetrating power. Becquerel demonstrated this as some new kind of radiation. Influenced by this work, Mary Curie decided to look into uranium. She used a unique technique. Using her husband, Pierre's electrometer, she found that activity of radiation of uranium compounds depends only on the quantity of uranium present. This is what we know as law of radioactive decay. She hypothesized that the radiation was not outcome of some interaction of molecules, but must come from atom itself. She thought uranium atoms rapidly disintegrate and emit rays. This hypothesis was really important and opened a new branch in physics called radiation. For this radiation theory and discovery, Mary got her first Nobel Prize in 1903, shared with her husband Pierre Curie and Henry Becquerel. Madame became the first woman in science to win Nobel Prize. She kept on her research on radiation with the help of her husband. She used two uranium materials, pitchblende and charcoalite. From this, she extracted uranium with the help of chemical reactions. Mary Curie found that uranium minerals must contain small quantities of another substance that was far more active than uranium. With the course of time, they discovered two other radioactive elements, polonium, named after her native land Poland, and radium with the help of her husband. This discovery of radium and polonium changed the world forever. After Pete died in a road accident, Mary Curie became a professor. In 1911, Mary Curie was awarded another Nobel Prize for her discoveries of two new elements, radium and polonium. She became the only person in science discipline to win Nobel Prize twice. She was also the only woman scientist at that time to be invited in Solvay Conference in the year 1911 and 1927. 
among which the big titans of science of that time like Albert Einstein, Erwin Schrodinger and Paul Dirac. In the year 1934, she died due to anemia believed to have been contracted from her long-term exposure to radiation. But her legacy lives on. Her surname Kuri became a unit of radiation. Radioactive minerals and elements like kurite, sclerotoskite and curium was named after her to make us remember what she contributed to the world and science. If you are new to this channel then subscribe the channel for future videos.